Hey everybody, Red Kiwi here. Thought I'd do a bit of a deep dive into the architecture and designing and planning for Microsoft Teams. So this is the technical architecture of Microsoft Teams. So it really uses a number of foundational components in Office 365 and surfaces those up into the Teams experience. So some of the highlights for this is I think that I draw out is when you're sharing files with with other people uh, in the chat, that's using OneDrive for business under the hood. When you have the files tab with inside Teams, that's actually using a SharePoint document library, which we'll talk about a little bit later on. Uh, the messaging inside Teams is using Skype under the hood, but those are the main ones that I wanted to draw your attention to. So it is based on Azure Active Directory in terms of authenticating to Microsoft Teams. Currently, as it stands of November 2017, uh, if you want to share stuff outside of Teams with people, at the moment, the only way to, to do that is through those identities also being Azure Active Directory. However, it is on the roadmap to allow Microsoft accounts to be able to authenticate against uh, Teams. And you'll see further details on that on the Office 365 roadmap. So SharePoint Online is used extensively under the hood of Teams. So when you create a team, it's actually creating a SharePoint Teams site uh, under the hood in SharePoint Online. So each channel, so the general customer accounts, development, that's a channel, that is its own folder within that SharePoint Teams site. The files tab that we talked about earlier, this piece here, all these files here, that is a document library with inside that SharePoint team site. Uh, so the great things about that is that you can actually apply any of the permissions or file security options within SharePoint will automatically be reflected up into Teams. So I'm gonna break out of this slide deck and show you that. So I'm in Teams here, and if I go into Files, you can actually see here open in SharePoint. And here are the, you can see here are the files that exist here. The nice thing that you can also do with that from an administrative perspective is if you go to the settings and say library settings, this is where you can manage a lot of the security and permissions, versioning, uh, workflows, views, this is really important, information rights management. So this is something that I'd strongly recommend organizations looking at. So if you are sharing content with people outside your organization, you're gonna wanna look at information rights management because it's gonna encrypt those documents so that if you need to revoke permissions for those people that you've shared those documents with, you can be rest assured that no matter where those documents ended up, if those external users downloaded them onto a USB key or emailed them to a personal account, they'll no longer be able to open them because they've been protected with information rights management, which is part of Office 365. So lots of things that you can do. The other nice thing that because all the files are stored inside SharePoint, you can start to set retention policies, archiving, e-discovery, all of those great things that come with SharePoint Online, you can now apply to your Teams environment. So when you are in Teams and say you're in a chat and you attach a file and send it, it's actually going to use OneDrive for Business to store that file and send it. Uh, Files are also available on a tab here within Teams, and that's gonna allow you to access your OneDrive for business files right from within Teams. 
permissions are automatically granted to all participants in a private chat where a file is shared. That's important to know. One note, so when you add uh, the notes tab inside a Teams, that's using OneNote under the hood, a shared OneNote. Uh, and so it's created for each team, sections are created for each channel, and you can open it in OneNote to get additional functionality uh, over and above the web version that you're getting inside Teams. Again, the security of settings that are applied within OneNote will automatically apply to notes within Teams. When you do create a Microsoft Team, it is creating a group, an Office 365 group under the hood. One of the things is if you do have an existing group, you can import or bring that over to Teams because there really is that one-to-one -one relationship between Teams and groups. So when you do create a team, it also creates in Exchange Online a group mailbox and a calendar for each team. When you go into the meetings tab, or sorry, the meetings um, icon within Microsoft Teams, it's surfacing your calendar. And when you create a, a, a meeting within that, it is going to push it into your Exchange calendar. There are concepts of connectors, obviously tabs and bots. So they are going to allow you to create very customized, rich experiences. The list is getting very, very long and extensive, which is really great to see. And tabs can also be built from scratch, or you can adapt it from an existing web app. And then you can create bots, which can integrate and interact with Teams which can surface information from back-end systems right within a conversation or things like that within your Teams. So as I mentioned earlier, the authentication model as it stands today is using Azure Active Directory to be able to authenticate to it or invite other people. On the roadmap is the ability, is going to be the ability to have Microsoft accounts. From a compliance perspective, one thing I would call out is many organizations are building their strategy and executing their strategy to become GDPR compliant. And you can enable that with the functionality that is within Office 365 Teams. There are a couple of things that are part of the more advanced E5 package that you may require to become GDPR compliant. I would recommend that you talk to your modern workplace uh, specialist to get more details on that. A couple of things I wanted to talk around meetings with inside Teams uh, is the bandwidth. So I'm not going to go through this chart, but it is here for you to review. This basically gives you some recommended uh, bandwidth rates that you should be factoring in when you think about um, bandwidth to your sites of users that are using Teams. So we'll use one for an example. So in this case, you could have two participants in a meeting with somebody sharing their screen of 19 or a 1080p screen. That's going to download four megabits and upload four megabits for the person on the other end who's receiving it. If you're doing multiple screen resolutions and viewing layouts, the statistics are there for you. And then if you're just doing audio, each stream of participant is going to require about 100 kilobits for audio upload or download, depending on if you're receiving the audio or sending the audio. Because the audio and video that Teams uses leverages some of the advanced codecs that we acquired when we bought Skype, there is a lot of flexibility in terms of uh, packet loss jitter that it can tolerate in those calls. And these are some of the statistics that it can tolerate and withstand while still continuing the, the audio or video portion of the meeting. From a chat perspective or the conversation tab, all of the data is stored at rest in regional clouds based on the tenant location. Uh, 
chats are managed by the Teams chat service, which runs within Office 365 compliance boundary. They are, we retain all the messages. So if you need that for compliance purposes, uh, you can put retention policies around that. In summary, we covered really the underlying architecture of Teams, what it's using, how do you archive things, how do you, where to go to set security policies. It's fin it is really handy that it's leveraging SharePoint because that means that you have access to all the workflows, the versioning, uh, the retention policies, the e-discovery, all of those things that are associated with SharePoint. Now you can take advantage of from a team's perspective. So I hope this answers a lot of the questions that I've been getting in terms of the technical underpinnings of teams. Uh, it is really taking off. We've got lots and lots of customers starting to use it internally and externally with their vendors and customers. It's a really exciting space to be in. If you do have any other extra questions, post them in the, the comments and I'll get answers back to you as quick as I can. Thank you very much. We'll see you soon.